hello everyone welcome to the next training in asset accounting lean implementation so today we'll be doing the last topic within lean implementation that is preparing for production startup so under this topic before moving on what are the different customization steps let's have an overview what is preparing for production over star startup is all about so with all the functional settings configurations or customization whatever you want to say to is in place as we covered all in the last uh, five sessions all that you have left before you can go live is to configure some of the remaining technical settings in the system so in this section we'll discuss about the various technicalities which needs to be done in this part and that is like resetting the company code then resetting the posting posted depreciations we check the system for consistency and the further steps required for production startup will be covered in this part so in this particular training session of today we will be covering the above customizations or settings which needs to be the technical settings which needs to be done and these are as in a screen first is to reset company code second reset posted depreciation third check consistency fourth set or reset reconciliation accounts and fifth is transfer balances and at last activate company code so these are the six different technical settings within asset accounting lean implementation which we'll be going through however if you would have been on a regular asset accounting implementation these steps would have been uh, far more than the, these as we are we are going to cover so moving on to one by one to each of these steps moving on to the first part that is reset company code now what is this all about in the reset company code what we can do is we can delete all the data which we have created so far in the SAP system the data which we have created so as to test that the config or the settings have been working fine or not that is the asset master data and the transaction data for a company code so with resetting the company code what the system does is it deletes all the master data records and the transaction records for that particular company code from the particular from the SAP system so th this might be necessary for example following a test takeover of old asset data so it happens that at times when all settings are done we at times take some of the data from the old system and upload those data in the system in SAP system and just to check with that whether everything is uploaded correctly is the values been picked okay or not and after that once we have tested all those transaction takeover then later on while going with the full data upload we reset the company code so by resetting all the data with respect to the asset gets deleted from the system but one thing the data only gets deleted the customizing settings are not deleted so there are certain caution which needs to be taken at present you cannot reload the deleted data again if you are also using investment management component the asset under construction belongs to capital investment measures are also reset this can lead to inconsistencies in relation to the internal orders or the WBS elements in the controlling part so now what we will be doing in this particular step is we will be resetting the company code and we'll see how the data gets deleted from the system so moving on to the customizing path we first need to go to SPRO enter and then we need to click on to SAP reference IMG 
Now in this you will find the customizing path. We need to go to financial accounting new expand and within that you will find asset accounting expand that and move to the first step that is asset accounting lean implementation expand this part and then we can go to our own topic that is uh, preparing for production startup expand and you will find the first step reset company code so moving on to to do that in the SAP screen let's execute this step and there are certain things to, which needs to be taken care that when we are running this customization it has to be run in a test status so let's execute this so you can see the screen reset company code you can even, you, you can even read these these above lines as on the screen this transaction will reset all the application data from asset accounting in one company code you can only use this company code in a test system means just for the testing purpose you can use this when you carry out this action it is logged with your name so as you can see the username keeps coming up over there now moving on to the company codes the company code is 1200 and then if you want the master data as well as the transaction data to be deleted then you need to select the line item only so in that case the line item uh, in case you don't select this both the data will be deleted the master data as well as the transaction data but in case you only want to delete the the transaction data in that case you need to select line items only so now we can move once we have taken these things we can enter on the screen and you can see this has been the process so you can see the message has been generated do you want to reset the company code 1200 so resetting means all your data will get deleted so let's do yes and once we do yes it says perform depreciation recalculation for company code 1200 enter and you can see now the message comes up to you the company code 120 was reset terminal so in this way you need to execute this particular step so as to reset your data your all the data you have on the system and that can be deleted if you have created those for the testing purpose again you need to take care that you need to keep in mind that asset accounting data is deleted in this processing step so what happens is only the data within the asset accounting gets deleted but the other impact the the integrated applications data doesn't gets deleted like the the values which has been posted to financial accounting or general ledger accounting those are not deleted so the the but the integrated application that is financial accounting are not affected at all therefore you should only carry out this step in conjugation with the other applications so if you are deleting the the data over with the asset accounting part in that case you need to delete the data from the other other sub modules of uh, or modules of SAP as well there is no problem with data that are transferred within the framework of old asset data transfer so this is uh, how you will be you will be resetting the company code however this is not needed because whenever we work we work on on couple of different clients so one client is used as a testing purpose the actual actual production system is different where the actual data is uploaded at a later part all the test testing is supposed to be done in in a sandbox or in another client for with respect to all the different scenarios so moving on this is about the resetting of company code data similar to that is the next step that is reset posted data so if you go to reset posted data in that case again you can reset your data with respect to the depreciation part 
So if you want to delete your depreciation transactions, you can delete those from the asset accounting part by going through the second step, reset posted depreciation. So, so you can reset the posted depreciation in the asset subledger only when the company code is in the test status. Now the company code is in the test status means if you remember that uh, the depreciation area is supposed to have have to be in the test status part that is 2 we, we did in the last training session if you remember while doing the asset data transfer. So then only when, when the, the company code is in a test mode test status then only you can delete the data from the asset accounting part otherwise you cannot delete those data. So the system only then deletes the corresponding value data for all the asset all the fixed assets for a company code. This reset of, of posted depreciation deletes all the data that is used to manage and monitor the depreciation posting runs. And when you delete this data, this action might be necessary if you need to return to the original depreciation posting status during the system installation phase. So this is uh, this is not done basically, but this is could be one of the part which you can utilize it. Uh, but it's it's rarely been utilized anywhere. So this is uh, not a reset in accounting sense. This is only reset in the asset accounting. No documents or posting sessions are created to cancel depreciation posting already which has been posted in the financial accounting or you can say in the ledger accounting. So whatever the different depreciation has already been posted in the general ledger accounting while with the documents been accounting documents been created those are there intact. Those particular accounting documents don't get cancelled. So as a consequence a reset in the asset accounting results in a difference between the accumulated depreciation of fixed asset that is the asset accounting module and the difference will be lying in the other on the other hand to their respective general ed general ledgers in the financial accounting part. So that is why we, we don't go for resetting of asset data because if you reset the data then the transaction data value which have been reset in the asset accounting we will will be lying up on the financial accounting part and there will be a balance mismatch. Another important thing if you reset the posted depreciation uh, please keep in mind that the data of all posting runs is deleted. You cannot delete uh, the data with respect to couple of asset master. You cannot segregate the data that these needs to be reset or deleted but the rest of has to be intact. No. When it reset, it reset all the data in the asset accounting. So the data of all posting runs or depreciation runs are deleted. Not just the data of the last posting run. So in addition the posted values entered during a data transfer during the fiscal year are deleted. This legacy data therefore has to be re-entered again by you. So that is why uh, resetting is not taken as a viable option but SAP has provided you one of the option of resetting either case is resetting of company code or reset, reset posting depreciation will, will raise differences between asset accounting balances and the balances within the general ledger accounting and financial accounting part. So you can do good you can even reset the posted data we can go and we can execute this step let's see and in over here you can put the company code so you can see now again this transaction reset is posted depreciation for asset accounting in one company code see the documentation for this transaction see when you carry out this action it is logged with your name so this is something very critical that's why the user ID name has been saved by the system that this has been done by this particular person or this particular name and now you can put the company code for which you can reset you want to reset and once you you enter the company code you can enter on the screen 
as there is no option of uh, reset execute or anything as such so to to execute this step we need to enter after assigning the company code to it now enter on the screen and as we entered you can see it asks you for do you want to delete the depreciation posted in company code 1200 so if you really want to delete it you can go and click on yes so as we click on yes the system will delete those data so the posted depreciation was reset in the company code 1200 the message been generated to you so this is how you can reset the data so just to have a learning perspective you can try these steps and you can see what are the different consequences to this if you delete the data for company code or for the depreciation part then those data gets depreciated only on the asset accounting part sorry the data gets whether it's master data or transaction data in either of the two configurations we covered gets deleted in the asset accounting module but their values which has been posted to financial accounting you will find those values still in the financial accounting sub module general ledger accounting part so the values are still there in the as in the in the accounts part but just in the asset the values got deleted so that is why it gives re, ri, it, it gives rise to differences in the in between these two sub modules so you can do those those different pros and cons and different permutation and combinations kind of a testing with these two steps and that will give you more broader perspective of that to you now moving on to the next is check consistency so moving on to this check consistency step under this step to check the consistency of system settings we can execute this step so once all the settings all the customizations are there in place in the last all these different last five training sessions we configured the system for asset accounting in this particular step we can see the consistency of the system for asset for asset accounting part so you can perform the check individually for items such as asset classes chart of depreciation or the company code so or even for the depreciation areas so you can check for consistency for any of these different part individually and in case there is any kind of a inconsistency or any kind of a uh, thing which has been me missed by the system it will give you those those messages those errors on this on the screen so let's see how that can be done one by one so we if you execute this step now check consistency you can see there are number of different activities on the screen so there is a asset accounting chart of depreciation company code depreciation areas then and the last two part is important for you that is to check for the consistency if you want to check the consistency for asset GL accounts means how the the GL accounts are assigned to the different asset classes that can be checked with this particular part and the last step consistency report FIAA customization that is financial accounting asset accounting customizing so even in the last step you can check for all the customizing if there is any kind of a uh, conflict any kind of a error within the customizing that will be reflected to you So uh, that is what we will be looking after one by one. So moving on to the first activity is overview report that is asset classes. If you double click on to this, it will take you to the next screen. As you can see, the first activity display asset classes per chart of depreciation. So what is your chart of depreciation? You can assign that over here first of all, and then you can you can check your report for asset classes so if you remember we we created the asset class in this so we can go and we can even search those asset classes which we defined let's see in this system so you can see on the screen the different kind of asset classes have been reflected to you these asset classes are at client level that's why these are these are these can be allowed for any company code for but 
the one which we created for our company code was 80020 that is computers so we can take that enter on the screen and that will be selected as you can see 80020 and now if you remember the screen layout rule for this even you can take that from over here screen layout so you can go to f4 key and you can find the screen layout the screen layout we took was 1000 so that has been taken up over here now the functions of the asset class so if you want to what what kind of a report you want to have a look for you can select those options over here so i don't need any real estate part i don't need any group assets now what i need is no auc line item settlement investment measures no so i will select only these options so these different options varies as per different functions so we just need only this particular function over here and then we can execute this report with the execute option over here so execute it as you can see so once you put the asset class there it show you the the asset class on the screen to you so this is it the depreciation chart of depreciation you can see chart of depreciation india lean implementation the description and this is the asset class which we define within the chart of depreciation so this is computer 80020 similarly you can come up and you can take another asset class also if you have so if you remember we created two asset classes 80020 and 80040 so that is what we have created and you can even execute that if you have but probably the second one setting is not completed fully that's why that's not been reflecting in the report so this is how you will be executing this particular report in the system now moving back so this is the first part how you can check the report for asset class similarly you can move on and check the report for chart of depreciation so if you double click on chart of depreciation it will take you to the next screen for reporting perspective where we can run the report for chart of depreciation so you can see this screen now there are number of different chart of depreciations created as you can see there is 1000 within 1000 the depreciation area is this and this the, these are the different uh, depreciation keys created going down further you will find the chart of depreciation 2000 which we had defined for our company code so this is over here on the screen to you 2000 chart of depreciation in india lean implementation the company code assigned to this is 1200 and then moving down you will find these are the different depreciation areas that has been assigned to it and the depreciation keys have also been reflected over here on to you on the screen so this is how you can you can see those different part and these are the other depreciation keys as you can see which can be used within the asset accounting part so this is how the report with respect to chart of depreciation reflects to now we can move back to the next activity overview report for company codes now in this we can execute the report for company code now so we can double click on this third activity and in this now we need to put the company code so as to have the report for with respect to asset for the company code part so you can see now on the screen it don't ask you for the company code what it does it it takes whatever the different company codes are there within the system it shows for all of them so you can see this is for 0001 sap ag this is the default company code similarly you can see 1000 moving down you can see for 1200 so 1200 is the company code which we have been defined by us this is it so we can have a look of that so as you can see now this is the depres uh, the company code the company code number allocation 1200 the company code fiscal year variant assigned to this is april to march v3 
even you can see the transfer date is been taken up as 31 3 2015 the chart of depreciation is 1000 then the net worth tax is 01 so the number range has been assigned to it the number range interval in the company code is one is not defined for document type so with that we will be defining up then the do document type for depreciation posting is af so what it does it it, it show you all the detail with real with respect to the company code for asset accounting the detail with respect to what is the chart of depreciation what is the fiscal year variant what are the different uh, depreciation areas and all so that is what you need to have a look of and if you move down you will find further more companies which comes as a default with the when we implement the system so by in the SAP software you will find all multiple different companies uh, on the basis of different countries so this is just to check that activity with respect to company code now moving down we can check for depreciation area as well so we can double click on to overview report depreciation area again it will show you the depreciation area with respect to the chart of depreciations so the diff every asset accounting in asset accounting as is it's the first primary more or important part is chart of depreciation so every company code has got its own chart of depreciation as you can see for 1000 chart of depreciation the depreciation area is 0 1 and 50 if you move down for 2000 you will find depreciation area is 0, 01 0, 02 0, 03 15 30 so we took five or six around depreciation areas for our purpose if you move down you will find further more depreciation areas as you can see chart of depreciation z100 created and it has took three different depreciation areas so it, it depreciation area basically means that whatever the different depreciation area created within the chart of depreciation in the SAP system the report will reflect you that on the screen so that is all about so these basic reports uh, it's not that 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 meaningful or that significant what is more significant is this last two steps consistency report for asset GL accounts so when you execute this second last activity what the system does is the system checks for all the general ledger accounts or the ledger accounts which has been assigned with the asset classes or you can say the account determination that account determination is finally assigned to asset class so the system check whether those GL numbers which has been assigned to those account determinations whether uh, they are properly assigned whether the GL has been created or not and and so so if everything is in place you will find a green signal if there is some some problem then you will find uh, a, a red signal and all those so let's see what it shows double click on to this so if you double click on to this you can see on the header FIA customizing consistency check for GL accounts so we can put the company code over here 1200 and we can enter on execute this so as I have executed this step now you can see a new screen have came up to you on the system it says the company code 1200 the chart of account 1000 the account group 1020 with the depreciation area there are certain warning messages as you can see the warning is account 202350 does not exist so what happened is when we created the asset accounting settings what we did is we assigned the GL number to the asset class in fact to the account determination but we had not created those GL account in the general ledger accounting submodule of FA part so what you need to do is you need to create these different GL accounts accordingly as you have assigned those in the account determination under asset accounting so accordingly you need to take those so in every different depreciation areas you will find 
the, the these different GL number has been used so in some of them the GL number are common like for loss on sale of asset gain on sale of asset these these two GL are the same for every different asset classes so the same GL you will be reflecting over here like 390 390 within the same two different depreciation area it has got the same same uh, warning message so what you need to do is you need to create these GL accounts and once you create you can again go and cross check the consistency for GL account with the asset and again the system will reflect you and in case there will be no such consistency problem uh, the system will give you a, a, a totally green signal to move ahead so you can move down you can check all those things so the basically the consistency problem is all about the GL account and in fact you can see now this GL account which we had created is not a reconciliation account so whatever the GL which has been created which will be created for asset accounting all those GLs will be a reconciliation account so I, I hope in financial accounting you must be knowing how to create a GL account with FS00 and when you create there you need to create the GL you need to put the description in the general part then in the second option you need to select the reconciliation and you need to select the line item display so that is what you have to take care and and once these GL are created and are correctly created these error will go off so this is how to check the consistency for GL accounts with respect to asset accounting so this is how you would be checking these consistency this part is a very important part now moving back and moving to the next step is the last step that is consistency report FIAA customizing so now if you go and double click onto this in this it will take you this particular uh, step will be taken to a customizing screen in which you will see a list of six different steps as on the screen together with the status red status refers to error occurred green means no error occurred and yellow means warning error warning message so these different three different colors will be reflected to you and if you double click in any of these these uh, colors or icons you will get a message which will give you that what this particular error refers to so you can see now the first step is depreciation area company code so the step one checks the depreciation area with the company code and for that it gives you the error similarly you can move to the step two the transaction type and if there is any transaction type error that will be reflected to you if you move to step 3 that is period control and depreciation rules so in this the system checks for the period control and the different depreciation rules to be applicable moving to the fourth is master data no error occurred so you can see just like as a step number four all the six steps should be reflected to you accordingly then moving on to next is step 5 for depreciation key so warning has been generated and last is account determination in that the error occurred so if you want to see these error that what is this error all about what kind of error has occurred so you can dis you can double click in any of these errors suppose I go and click on to this red error occurred on that particular I will take the cursor there and double click on to that so it gives you the error that for depreciation area 15 takeover of value from depreciation area 0 when is not possible so uh, that is what uh, one need to look for that what needs to be done so that this error can be moved to a no error occurred part similarly you can move to the second step and you can double click on that because the error is different from the step one so if you double click on this now you can find number of different errors so these errors are with respect to the transaction types if you click on any of them double click on them so you will find the transaction type 29a transaction type 
250 entered for acquisition same year not allowed so in fact we don't need these transaction while going live that's why we don't need these transaction even in the SAP system so we can close this we can close this tab as well now moving to the last the fourth one if you double click on master data so it will not take you anywhere because there is no such error in it if you go ahead double click on depreciation keys warning have been generated if you double click on this it will give its own message because it, it gives the message with respect to all the depreciation areas what is more important for us is only the depreciation chart of depreciation 2000 so these are the two which we need to look and warning is something which is not a major concern now the last step is account determination if you double click on that and that needs to be resolved so again in this there is certain error with respect to the GL account so the GL accounts actually needs to be defined so this is how these different six steps will be reflected to you for consistency with respect to the customization part actually what happened is whatever the different steps which are there in lean implementation there are certain steps which are out of lean implementation and which for which you need to go to regular asset implementation part and you need to do those customization under the regular part like for depreciation keys to be defined now if you need to define depreciation keys for the chart of depreciation for company code then you need to go to the regular implementation where we would be creating the different depreciation keys as per different percentages of depreciation to be charged so we'll see that moving back now so this is how you would be you would be going through your check consistency so these are the different six steps where the first four basically refers to just an overview on the reporting part but the last two is what is more meaningful for your consistency check so now we'll be moving up to the next step that is set or reset reconciliation accounts so moving up with the next step is set or reset reconciliation account in this step we define the GL accounts of asset accounting as reconciliation accounts or even you can set these reconciliation accounts back to being normal postable accounts we can make these changes only as long as the company code is not live for asset accounting another prerequisite is that this change is no longer possible in financial accounting itself because of the balances from asset data transferred from your legacy system so if you remember that when we assigned the GL account to uh, the balance sheet accounts uh, or the profit and loss accounts those GL account those accounts are supposed to be reconciliation accounts so those GL are those which to whom we have to make these as uh, have to set them as or reset them as reconciliation accounts so you can reset them to normal account which enable them for direct posting like JV and if we reset those accounts to reconciliation account in that case one cannot post any kind of a direct transaction or a JV to that particular asset accounts so you need to reset for example when you have entered an incorrect GL account in asset accounting assignment and also made it as a reconciliation account using this step as set or reset account uh, reconciliation account so let's see how we can we can make a particular GL uh, reconcile we can set a particular asset GL account to reconciliation how that can be done so moving on to SAP screen the path is same you have to move up with the same topic preparing for production startup the fourth step set or reset reconciliation account so we can go and we can execute this step 
as I clicked on to this particular step and you can see now the next screen comes up with the with all the different company codes within the client so we need to set our we need to select our own company code that is 1200 and we can go to the left side to change control of reconciliation accounts so we can double click on change control and you can as I clicked double click you can see now that these are the two GL accounts which has been assigned to the different account determinations so these are the GL account which are supposed to be set as asset as reconciliation account type as asset you cannot leave them blank if you leave them blank in those cases anyone can make any posting to these GL accounts however these GL accounts are supposed to receive their their entries their documents from the asset accounting part as an integration approach so once you make this change it is no longer possible to post directly to these accounts nobody can post directly directly means nobody can post a GL to GL or a general voucher document in SAP for these GL instead only integrated posting using asset accounting is possible after selecting this account type as assets so this is what you need to do once the resulting overview is on the screen and uh, you find that all the GL accounts with the reconciliation account type as asset has been taken under the reconciliation account for account type part that is the last column now as you can see even there are a number of different other options as well for customer vendor account contract account receivable so uh, what we need to do over here is we need to select assets for asset accounting when you will be to your accounts payable part then you will be selecting the vendor when we will be in the accounts receivable then we would be selecting customer reconciliation for those purposes so uh, or even you can just leave them blank but if you select blank in that case a direct posting will be allowed to these GL, which is not recommended otherwise there could be uh, you will not be able to post any value from asset accounting to this GL if you select them as a blank so you just need to select these uh, reconciliation account type as asset in this particular step that is all we need to do in this particular part and then you can go and you can save this screen and the save data was saved as you can see so the, this is what needs to be done with respect to reconciliation account for asset accounting now moving back to the next step next step is transfer balances okay so now moving up to the next step transfer balances let's first understand whenever we we go uh, we customize the system uh, for asset accounting there are two ways of posting the the data the transfer data from the old system in the SAP system one there are two steps one is uploading the value in the SAP system for asset accounting where all the asset numbers with their values as a gross value then accumulated depreciation then the net value are uploaded along with their master data but whatever the asset data which we upload in the asset accounting as we have seen that change uh, create change or display legacy data so by, by that only the asset data is uploaded their values are uploaded but those values doesn't get flown to the ledger accounts in in the general ledger accounting part so only those values are reflected in the asset accounting you will see those in a fixed asset register those values will be reflected to you but those values are not actually reflected to you on the trial balance or a financial statement so the two approaches one you upload the value to the asset account accounting which ultimately reflects you in the fixed asset registers and the second step is uploading the same value to these ledger accounts in general ledger accounting as well so this trial balance is basically used for the same purpose so what we do in this step of transfer balance is that we can post balances 
to GL accounts which have already been defined as reconciliation account in the last step. So you can only post these corrections in the company code which have been have the implementation status. The legacy, the transfer of legacy data, legacy asset data using the legacy asset transfer doesn't affect the balances to that of the general ledger accounting or to different accounts in the GL part, GL accounting. So how we do the upload of value in the GL account? This is where we would be moving up with. So because the balances of the corresponding reconciliation balances in FI are not affected during legacy asset transfer data as said, you need to post the balances to asset accounting reconciliation accounts as well. And this is where this particular step of transfer balance is used. So what we do in this case is we, we go to this step and then we select the date on which the balances will be uploaded. Normally this is the same date as the transfer date. So it will be 31-3-2015, 31-3-2015. You select period is not needed. It system takes it off its own. Then you select the company code 1200. Then you select the document type. So the document type we normally take is AA. And if you have any account group, you can select the account group. So the account group normally used to be 0L. So that is what we will be taking. And now once you have taken all these different different input parameters on the screen, uh, you have specified the company code, document type and the ledger account and enter the document type and posting date on the initial screen. So then we can enter on the screen now and it will take you to the next screen now enter again so this takes you to the next screen and in this screen you need to select the GL account so the GL account basically used to be the one it will be the asset account in which the value needs to be taken up so the GL account will be we need to search that so let's see what are the different GL accounts we can take over here for asset value take upload So you can get the list of GL accounts. These are the basically GL accounts which we have taken up. So suppose I take these two different GL accounts for asset and land. And we can take it on the other side. Over here. So these two balances will be debited as we will be uploading the value. We will be taking these values as a, as a closing value which will become the opening val value on the very next day. So we will be maintaining these document lines for debit with the details on the GL account. That is the, these GL are basically the asset reconciliation account which we have just uh, reset as reconciliation in the last step. And then we will be taking up the amount. Suppose I take the first amount as 50,000 and the second I take it as 40,000. So now there is two debit items. So as an accounting in entry, there is a dual concept that debit should be equal to credit. So now in the next line, we need to select the, the credit part as well. And on these further parts, if you have further dive, further bifurcation, what is the business area, what is the profit center. So even if you want, you can upload these balances as per different business area or profit center wise. Now on the credit side, we would be taking any other separate GL. Normally there used to be a GL for especially meant for balances upload for asset. So, uh, uh, so that, that is what's supposed to be taken. Uh, for the time being, just to reflect you how it has been done, we have been taking suppose uh, another GL that is 1400900. And in this, we can take the cumulative amount. So this is how, if you see, enter, the entry is completed. And we can save it and this will generate a document number for that. So in this way, you are supposed to upload the value for the asset 
reconciliation accounts in the general ledger in the FI part. Then only these values will get impacted on the ledger account. So once we have taken up these, we can go and we can save this entry. So now once we save it, the system gives you an error that, uh, all right, let's, let me change this GL account. So now I'm going to save the entry. And as you can see, the document will be so now you can see that the system has posted the document as on the screen. So this is the document has been posted over here as you can see on the footnote document number 1000000 and if you want you can go back and you can see this document with the display document FB03. So this is how you will be uploading the values within the SAP system for different assets to their respective ledger accounts. So you must have to take care that once you take all the GL values, the debits would be equal to your credit and then you can upload the balances as per different business area or profit center wise as well. If you have those business area or profit center concept taken up in your SAP system. So this is how the value can be uploaded in the SAP system for the assets part. So once that has been done, then we can move to the next that is activate company code. Now this is the same customizing step that we have already used in the last session if you remember, where we have to keep the status as two, that is the test mode. So we study that when we assign the chart of depreciation to the company code, the system automatically takes the status as two, that is the test mode. And once we are done with all the testing, everything is ready and we are ready to go live with asset accounting part, we need to set those status to from two to zero so that it can be said that the asset data transfer is complete. So going live, live means uh, that you, you must have completed your asset transfer data and all your values has been uploaded and is ready to be used in a go live or in a production system. So now let's see how activate company code works. So if you execute this step now and you can see for the company code as we have seen earlier as well. For the company code you need to change this status from 2 to 0 and as you select the status as 0 the system description changes from test company code to asset data transfer completed. So if you have completed all your asset data transfer, you can set the status from two to zero. And in that case, you will not be able to transfer any asset of from the previous or from the old system to SAP system anymore. So that is why this particular step has to be taken due care before changing the status. This basically completes your your whole production setup. So the whole topic was basically how to go live and before go live, how, what are the different production setup, production cat settings or technical settings to be done so as to move with the asset accounting in a live scenario in a live company so as to be used. So once this has been done, the asset accounting is complete and ready for go live. So you can save the screen and then we can move back. Okay, so this this is it. This is how these all different production setup part is used for and these are all for the legacy system. So in the legacy system you will found you will find the, uh, the lesser steps for customizing as compared to a regular asset counting implementation part. So this is all about the the preparation for production setup. Now you can try this at your end customize it, do this, and then you can do all those testing for asset acquisition, retirement, transfer, and all those things. So this is all about the lean implementation part. If you are interested for a regular, the whole regular asset accounting implementation part, so you can even go for those, those uh, sessions as well. They are there uh, with us. So that is it. Thank you. Have a nice day and all the best. Thank you.